What's up YouTube? Now today I'm going to show you how fast and easy it is to whip up these treat bags with just a little piece of fabric, some rope, and whatever you choose to put on the front. You could whip these up in a snap. I'll show you how to do it next. The things you're going to need to make this simple treat bag are one piece of fabric of your choice that measures 5 inches by 12 inches. You're going to need something for your drawstring. Today I'm going to just be using this cord. You could also just use ribbon or anything like that. You're also going to need something to put on the front of your bag. Now this year I'm just going to do it the easy way and I got a bunch of these vinyl iron-on transfers. I got these off of Amazon. They came in a pack with a different style. Some of them look cutesy like this. There's some pumpkins here. And there's also designs that look like this. Now, like I said, I got mine off of Amazon. I believe it was under $10 for my pack. You could also get iron-on patches. You could use your Cricut if you had one. That'd be perfect. I'm saving up to get one myself. Or you could just use a paint and some stencil and stencil on the bag if you'd like to do it that way. And actually, you don't have to put anything on the bag if you don't want to. If you had a Halloween print, that's just fine. I'll also be using my sewing machine with matching thread. Today I'll just be using black and my iron and ironing board. So let's get started. I forgot to mention one part that makes these very simple and very easy is pinking shears. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my fabric and my pinking shears and I'm going to pink the shorter edge, the 5 inch side. And I'm going to do that to both sides. Next I'm just going to grab my ironing board and I'm going to fold over a half inch and I'm just going to eyeball it on both of the sides that I just pinked. And then just hit it with my hot iron. So now I'm just going to head over to the sewing machine and with the eighth inch seam allowance from the pinked edge, I'm going to backstitch at the beginning and I'm going to sew all the way down, backstitching at the end, and I'm going to do that on both sides. Alright guys, so I'm setting over here at the sewing machine and you might see that the camera is a little different. I actually recently bought a wireless microphone pack that attaches to my regular camera and just to make these videos easier for me to put together and edit. I'm going to try out my little action camera here around the sewing machine. So today my length is a 2.5. I'll be using a straight stitch. I'm going to go ahead and move my needle to the left. And then I'm also going to line up the edge of my pinked fabric with the edge of my presser foot. And I'm going to backstitch. And I'm just going to flip it around and do the same thing on the other side. Alright guys, so it should look like that. So now with my pinked edges facing up, I'm going to match up the top and the bottom. and give it a press. So now I'm just going to go back over to my sewing machine and I'm going to start right here at my seam and back stitch. And with a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm going to sew all the way down to the bottom and back stitch. I'm going to do that to both sides. So this time I'm going to put my needle back to the center. I want a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to put my needle right where the seam is and back stitch. So I'm just going to flip it around and do the same thing. Just 
just like that. So now I'm just going to take my pinking shears and I'm going to pink the edge. And then just go back and trim any threads if needed. So now I'm just going to grab my cord, whatever I'm using for the drawstring, and I'm going to measure out roughly about a yard. I'm then going to go ahead and cut that in half, about 18 inches. And this cord tends to fray a lot, so what I like to do is I'm going to tie a knot here at the end. Then you just want to grab a safety pin, stick it through that knot. And then we can just thread our little bag. So I'm just going to stick it through one of the casings. And I like to just bunch up the fabric on the needle and then just pull the back end. Then I'm just going to go through the other casing. Just like that. And then just tie your two threads together in a knot. So now I'm just going to grab the other drawstring, tie a knot at the end, and do the same thing. But this time I'm going to stop and start at the opposite end. And then just tie the knot. And now we have a little cinch up drawstring bag. And now onto the fun part, we get to decorate it. So for this bag, I think I'm going to use the little black cat. Now this is plastic, but you can iron it, which kind of freaked me out at first. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to center this into my little bag. I'm going to grab my pressing cloth and lay it over. And with a hot iron, I just like to set it on here for 10 seconds. And while it's still warm, you want to remove the top layer of plastic. And now I like to go over it just one more time with a hot iron just to make sure everything is nice and stuck down. Just that fast. So now I just want to set that off to the side and let it cool down. So here are all the ones that I've made. I'm going to end up making 24 of these. I have three more to go. But comment down below of which character you think is the best. Now for the longest time we only had a few kids in our neighborhood and they always went into town for trick or treating. But as we all know this year has been a little bit different. And actually in the past couple of years a few more families with kids have moved in. They're actually taking over the neighborhood. And one of the mothers reached out and asked the neighborhood if we'd like to have a little Halloween party, a block party kind of thing. So I thought it would be nice in these trying times if every kid got a nice little handmade bag. And of course I'm going to stuff it full of candies. And I also have these cool glow in the dark rings. I actually got these on Amazon too and they flash red and blue. So I'm going to make sure every kid gets one of these as well. And I also have a whole bag of just miscellaneous little Halloween toys from years past. Stuff like that that they're also going to get. I hope you give this fast and easy treat bag a try. Of course you could use this for any holiday. If you'd like to see more of my videos, go down below and hit that big red subscribe button. Recently I checked my analytics and 80% of my views are from non-subscribers. So if you like my videos and you're not subscribed, 
go down below and hit that red button. And if you'd like to be notified as to when I post a video, right next to that is the bell button. Check out my links down below for my Etsy shop as well as my other social medias if you'd like to follow me over there and see what I'm selling. And if you all could do me a great big favor and head over to Instagram and follow me over there. I'm trying to get the swipe up feature that way I can promote my videos over there because I'm taking a little break from Facebook. I'll still be posting my videos just not as social as I was. And as always, thanks for watching. I hope everyone has a safe and happy Halloween and I'll see you next time.